Actor and musician Jack Black would meet a pot smoker named Kyle Gass in Los Angeles in 1986 while they were both members of a local theater troupe named the Actors Gang, which was also politically active. It would take eight years for the pair to form Tenacious D as they initially didn't start off on the best foot. The pair would be interviewed by the San Francisco Chronicle and discuss their first meeting with Gass saying, we were not instant friends, to which Black responded, there was a cool distance that maintained for a few months. When I first came in, I stepped on a few toes, not just yours. Gas would add to Rolling Stone, I was kind of the music guy, and then Jack came in and started blowing minds with these four-track home recordings that he was doing, and I was intimidated. I was a little threatened because he was obviously a wunderkind, and I was the old guy playing the guitar, but I wanted to be part of his world, really. I wanted some of his sauce. By 1994, the pair soon started a faux band paying homage to their rock heroes with just two acoustic guitars. Black would tell the LA Times that Tenacious D's sound was a mixture of folk metal with a weird nursery rhyme quality. The pair would have a standard formula for writing their songs with Black telling Marquee Magazine, we come up with titles and work backwards from there. It's all about the concept. Kyle comes up with a riff and I improvise on the topic. We do that for years. For every good song, there's a hundred ones, patience is more important than talent. The group's songs would discuss rock cliches like sex, drugs, and well, rock and roll. Tenacious D would get their name from a rather strange place. It would be NBA announcer Marv Albert, whose defensive catchphrase, they're playing some Tenacious D, served as the inspiration for the duo. Their first gig would take place at a hole-in-the-wall downtown venue in Los Angeles called Al's Bar. The pair soon received an immediate reaction from the audience, and it would send them on a spree of gigs, sometimes seeing them open for comedians who they referred to as part of the alternative comedy scene. It wasn't just about being funny, but also shocking as well. Black would reveal to the San Francisco Chronicle, I don't want to toot our own horns, but what we were doing really bordered on performance art. When we took to the stage, it was as if we were going to war. It was exhausting and exhilarating. The members would also chalk up their early success to the fact that they really didn't look like rock stars and more like the guys next door. Black would also tell the San Francisco Chronicle that because of Tenacious D, it helped his film career, and it was because of his band he landed a role in High Fidelity. His co-star in the film John Cusack would tell the LA Times, if you haven't had a chance to see Tenacious D play, it's one of the six or seven wonders of the world. Jack is great because somehow in his comedic aesthetic, it's like he's a king of somewhere. It might not be Earth, but it's definitely somewhere. Despite building a good following, Tenacious D still had his detractors, with some reviewers describing the band as an I quote rambling horribly and showcasing nothing but chaos while others called them mock rock. The LA Times would highlight one instance in which Tenacious D played South by Southwest to a crowd of 2,500 people with Black recalling it seemed unanimous. Everyone was into the D. Brains were being roasted, hearts were exploding. The next day we got the worst review we've ever received. The writer didn't even mention that anyone was enjoying the show. Doesn't he have to report the event as it happened, he would ask? Despite not landing much love from some critics, they did find some fans and other musicians, some of whom they'd later collaborate with. One of those musicians would include former Nirvana and Foo Fighters leader Dave Grohl, who first saw the band perform in 1997. He would tell Spin Magazine, I finally felt like I'd found the next Nirvana. The members of Tenacious D would end up appearing in Foo Fighters' video for Learn to Fly. From 1997 to 2000, Tenacious D would do a series of sketches for HBO, which were written by former Saturday Night Live writers Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. One memorable and reoccurring segment was the club manager at the venue they played at, who came up to the microphone and made band announcements. One of those announcements would hear him say, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, and Molly Hatchet cannot be here tonight, but they all had sex and they are proud to announce the birth of their two-headed baby, Tenacious D. The HBO series was supposed to be extended for another eight episodes, but the pair and HBO butted heads when the network demanded the pair relinquish their titles of executive producers. Despite Tenacious D's success and increasing fan base, they still hadn't properly recorded a studio album, but that was about to change. The Dust Brothers, who helped produce Beck and the Beastie Boys, took notice of Tenacious D and urged the duo to record an album. But they had one suggestion. 
do the recording with a full band instead of as a two-piece. Jack Black would tell Kerrang! Magazine, once the Dust Brothers caught wind that Dave Grohl was a fan and that he had come to see us a couple of times, they were like, what? We've got to get Dave Grohl in here. We were like, no man, we don't know him that well, we don't think he'd come in. The Dust Brothers kind of forced the issue and pushed us into having a big band because we were resistant to it. We were really proud of how we sounded live with just two acoustic guitars. Each song of the bands would be recorded with a full band and acoustically, and both versions would be compared and each time the full band version won. Gas would tell Kerrang how Dave Grohl was instrumental in getting the feel of the group's first album right, saying, the tempos Dave set were the tempos that we went with. He brought that fast punk rock energy to it. It was kind of mind-blowing just to have Dave playing on our songs. It was like your hero walking through the door, there goes my hero and he's playing drums on your track. It was pretty crazy. The album would also see appearances by the members of Fish, The Vandals, and Red Cross. The song Tribute would be found on the group's debut album and would be released as one of its main singles. The song references the greatest song ever, with Metallica's track one serving as the inspiration. Gas would tell Kerrang, it started late one night with Jack playing me the song One by Metallica and saying, check this out, this is the greatest song ever. I was impressed, but then he said that every one of their songs is kind of the greatest because they're so epic. I didn't really know who Metallica were at that point, so it had an impact. We thought we could probably write the greatest song, and then Jack said no, we can't just write the greatest song, but we could do a tribute to the greatest song. Then we were off to the races and the concept was born. It felt like a signature song right out of the gate. It was big and trying to be Zeppelin-esque. In addition to paying homage to Metallica, the album also featured nods to Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio, who got wind of the track and gave a seal of approval and even appeared in the video for the song Push. Also appearing alongside the songs were comedy bits, which would come together much more quickly than the music did. Tenacious D would end up nabbing a major recording contract with Sony-owned Epic Records, and they soon opened for the likes of Pearl Jam and Beck. The group's debut album, released in late 2001, would come out at a time when fewer and fewer albums were hitting sales milestones thanks to internet piracy. Tenacious D's self-titled debut record would end up going platinum four years after its release, selling over a million copies. Kyle Gass would jokingly tell Kerrang, the release of the record was magic. It was our first album and big rock tour, so the whole thing was just kind of surreal at the time. Our first tour was right after 9-11, and the record might have been the healing bomb that was needed. Maybe Tenacious D provided that for the nation. In 2006, Tenacious D would release a full-length feature film, The Pick of Destiny, and the fictitious story would be about the band's origins and their journey to find a magical pick belonging to Satan. Despite starring Dave Grohl and Ron James Dio, alongside the members of Tenacious D, of course, the movie would prove to be a commercial flop, only bringing in $14 million on a $20 million budget. Released alongside the movie would be the film soundtrack and the group's second album, The Pick of Destiny. The Pick of Destiny would end up going to number 8 on the charts, and the band would end up taking an extended break. Tenacious D would finally return in 2012 with their comeback album, Rise of the Phoenix, which was really a redemption story. The band had been written off by some following the poor performance of their movie, but the pair even addressed its disappointing performance on the album itself. Black would tell the LA Times that the pick of Destiny was, and I quote, a miserable failure, with Gas adding, that sent us into a bit of a spiral. For years after The Pick of Destiny came out, the members claimed they were writing new material, but stopping that momentum was Black's movie career, which saw him star in some big office blockbusters including Tropic Thunder and Kung Fu Panda, both of which brought over a billion dollars collectively. In 2016, the band's Twitter account announced that Jack Black had died, but it would turn out the group's Twitter account had been hacked and Black was not dead. Then in 2018, the band came up with an idea for an animated show that saw the pair try to save the world after an atomic bomb goes off. Gas and Black expected that networks and even some streaming services like Netflix would be chomping at the bit, with Black telling the LA Times, we were like, let the bidding war commence, but instead they all passed. Even the pair's old home HBO said no thanks. Without a home, the pair decided to upload the series onto YouTube and it would coincide with the release of their most recent record, 2018's Post Apocalypto. The series would be voiced by Black and Gas and hand drawn by Black. Looking back at the release, maybe it was wise of the pair to do it that way, given that they have more creative freedom and it contains a good deal of profanity and well phallic drawings. In 2018, the band lost their longtime recording contract with Sony and now needed to find a new home. 
Since their last album's release, the band has been pretty active, touring, doing tribute performances to groups like The Beatles and The Who, and they most recently have announced that they have a new album coming, which will probably come out sometime next year. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll Stories. Take care.